Hey everyone, welcome back to FRC Forecast. I'm your host Angel Miranda bringing you the latest for FRC Week 5. We have a wide range of events ranging from all over the United States to Canada. Join us as we play meteorologist and let's forecast for Week 5. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Our first event takes us to the U.S. North, where we have our correspondent Scott covering the Midwest Regional. Scott? 51 teams will gather at Credit Union 1 Arena in Chicago, Illinois for the 2024 Midwest Regional. This event is jam-packed with notable teams including 16, 111, 112, 359, 930, 1986, 2338, 2383, 3061, and world champs from last year, 4096. An impressive 40 of the 51 teams competing at this event have already competed so far this season. And of those teams that have already competed, we have four event winners, five event finalists, three regional impact award winners, and two regional engineering inspiration award winners. Let's dive in to see which of these teams could be having a big impact on this year's event. My first and only lock for the event is going to be team uh, the two-time event winners from this season, Team 359, the Hawaiian Kids. Winners of the Canadian Pacific and San Diego Regionals, this team boasts an impressive undefeated record of 30 wins, 0 losses, and 1 tie. With a variety of autonomous modes, quick, decisive scoring in both the amp and speaker, and a reliable trap mechanism, it's easy to understand how this team had the success they've seen so far this season. 359 also has an impressive off-the-field record and contributes significantly to their own community and FRC as a whole. It would be shocking if this team doesn't grab one of the top spots at this event. My first contender for the event is going to be from Oswego, Illinois. It's team 2338 Garrett Forward. Coming off their double silver cling bling as the regional finalist and win winners of the Regional Engineering Inspiration Award at the Central Illinois Regional, this team will be looking to upgrade both of those medals to gold. With a smooth drivetrain and a robot capable of scoring in all aspects of this year's game, this team's versatile strategic play and a now seasoned drive team should be able to elevate their game and pose a challenge for the other contenders at the event. My second contender for this event is 2338's first pick from the Central Illinois Regional and therefore also regional finalist from Arlington Heights, Illinois, it's Team 111 Wildstang. Despite this team's 3-8 record during qualifications, their robot had a very high ceiling of performance when not suffering from some of the mechanical hiccups that they had throughout the qualification matches. After their event, they have already detailed on their build blog for the year that they have made several changes to improve their reliability, and I think that with these changes and more consistent performance, you will see a much better event from 111, and expect to see them at the top of the rankings for this event. My third contender for the event is Team 3061 Husky Robotics, winners of the Heartland Regional. With a suite of cameras for robot localization and game piece detection, this fast and agile swerve robot has a pinpoint shooter capable of scoring a variety from a variety of angles and distances. With the ability to accurately pass and score around def defensive robots, this cycling machine will be hard to stop and will certainly be one to watch out for come finals. Finally, for a dark horse for the event, let's keep an eye on Team 191, the X-Cats, a team whose robot seems to have all the right mechanisms for doing well at the event. An excellent underbody the intake, a shooter will capable of launching notes at a variety of distances, and quite the number of flexible autos that would make them a good fit for any alliance for finals. 191 really dialed in their passing game at the Finger Lakes Regional and expect that if they are part of the right alliance, this team could go far at this event. Thanks Scott. Our next event takes us to the New England District where we have our correspondent Steven covering the UNH event. Steven? Hey everybody, and let's jump right in to preview the 2024 UNH District event. 37 teams will be gathering at the Whitmore Center Arena in Durham, New Hampshire this weekend as teams look to snatch up the last available district points before DCMP. This is one of the oldest serving venues in New England, including playing host to district championships in years past, and it's a favorite amongst many New England teams. 
First off, we're going to be looking at my locked in pick for this weekend, and that's going to be 133 Burt. Burt currently has the second highest autonomous EPA in the district, which puts them in a class all by themselves at this event. With a clever dual purpose note pickup and amp scoring mechanism, and a rock solid shooter, they're looking to cement a dynasty this weekend, having already won this event the past two years running. Moving on to the contenders, the three teams I think stand the best chance at either joining 133 or going up against them and trying to dash their dynasty dreams. Starting off with 166 Chop Shop. Celebrating their 30th anniversary this season, this six-time Impact Award-winning team and their robot Downforce are a force to be reckoned with. With a Teleop EPA even higher than Burt's, this team is cycling 10 notes per game and putting them up in the speaker with deadly accurate podium shots. Combine that with a fairly consistent harmony climb, and they could make an excellent alliance partner to any bot on the field this weekend. My second contender pick this week is 5813 Morpheus. These drowsy devils have already been captains of a second seed alliance this year, and they're looking to improve on their performance in week four. With their under the bumper intake and dead eye shooter, Morpheus makes it look easy as they drift across the center of the field, cycling well over 10 game pieces a match with virtually no missed shots and lulling their opponents into a false sense of security before ultimately defeating them. My third contender pick this week is going to be Team 4564 Orange Chaos. This tiny little pipsqueak of a bot seems to be able to squeeze its way through any defense on the field, and it stands to reason that its light agility is going to make them an extremely valuable alliance mate to any other robot on the field. It's week 5, which means we have current season data on all the teams competing this week. It's a numbers game, and all three of my contender picks this week have an EPA within one point of each other. So it really could be anyone's game this weekend. Finally for this event, we're going to go on to my Dark Horse prediction, which is going to be Team 8410 Oyster River Overdrive. These guys are a fairly young team, but they seem to be popping off this year. At Pine Tree, they managed to captain the number 7 seed, and send both the number two and number three seeds to the loser's bracket before they finally lost a playoff match. Clearly, these guys are swinging up, and I can't wait to see what they do this weekend. Good luck to all the teams at UNH this week, and I'll be back next week to preview one of the New England DCMP divisions as they all pack up and head to Springfield. Thanks, Stephen. Our next event takes us to the U.S. West, where we have our correspondent Stanford covering the Orange County Regional. Stanford? This week in SoCal, the Orange County Regional will host 48 teams competing at the OC Fair and Event Center in Costa Mesa, California. This will be the seventh running of the event, which first took place in 2016. Last year, we saw a classic Scorched Earth strategy play out with many declines in alliance selection, leading to a very evenly matched playoffs that saw the number three seed alliance come out on top. This year looks rather interesting, as there are quite a handful of teams that can challenge for victory. The first, and I believe most likely to rank first and win it all, is our lock for this event, Team 8033 Highlander Robotics. Coming off a finals appearance at Week 2's San Francisco Regional, this relatively young team looked impressive out on the field. What I found most strong was their amped mechanism. They have the now ubiquitous among top teams, elevator with rollers that dumps the note down into the amp. Unlike teams that shoot into the amp, their mechanism is nearly 100% reliable when lined up. Their shooting was also strong, though not the most accurate out there. In auto, their mad rush for centerline notes will be hard to beat, and they have other options for auto as well. The robot potentially looks like it was designed to score in the trap, and in the intervening three weeks, it's possible that they could show up to that with that capability to the Orange County Regional. With time to dial in their shooting and maybe make some mechanical upgrades, I expect this NorCal squad to finally take their first blue banner this weekend after three straight finals appearances. Moving on to our contenders now. These are teams that look strong enough to disrupt our lock and could definitely be a threat to walk away with the banner. First on this list is Team 2485, the Warlords. Looking seriously strong in both the Port Wainimi and San Diego regionals, this San Diego team has one of, if not the best, executions of the Quaka's RI3D concept that I've seen. Much like 8033, they are very, very good at both the amp and speaker, so they can truly be whatever best suits their alliance. Their autos also looked clean, and because their arm intakes from under the bumper and is therefore protected, they can take a serious beating in the race for centerline notes. Their boat hook climb didn't really seem to be working the way they wanted to in San Diego, but their auto and teleop performance has more than made up for that. Both of the region regionals they've been to uh, were the strongest in California by some metrics, so they will definitely be a team to watch out for 
at this more low-key SoCal event. Our next contender is Team 6995 Nomad. Also competing at the San Diego Regional last week, this team looked electric out on the field. Sporting a robust over-the-bumper intake and adjustable angle shooter, they have proven just how good they are at speaker cycles and feeding their alliance. Their climb is also really fast, so in quals, they can get a cycle or two extra before climbing to help get the RP. They do have a weakness, though, and that is the amp. They do have a, a dedicated mechanism for it, a little bar that stops the note from bouncing out when they shoot it in, but they do not use it very often, as, as it is not fantastically reliable and it was also ripped off in their first qual match last week. If they can pair up with a good amp bot and iron out some of the reliability issues that they had towards the tail end of San Diego, they will definitely be in with a shout of victory come playoffs. Our final contender is a team also competing at their third regional this year, and that's Team 7157, Mubotics. Despite how their Port Wyneme and Central Valley Regionals went for the Brea squad, I still see loads of potential in their on-field performance. At Central Valley, they seemed to iron out any of the mechanical issues that they once had, and added a new amp scoring mechanism, this time using their shooter instead of a handoff. It seems software was their biggest challenge last week, but if they use the time in between the two events to get it all figured out with their shooter and turret, they will absolutely tear it up out on the field. Maybe it'll be enough for them to secure their second blue, blue banner this weekend. Finally, a dark horse that could hop in and take the regional win right out from underneath our locks and contenders is Team 7042 Poly Rabotics. Last time out at the Los Angeles Regional, they looked strong with a specialty in quick amp scoring and not half bad speaker shooting prowess. Their robot also looks physically capable of scoring in the trap, so like 83-3, they could surprise us with that capability this weekend. On a more personal note, they are also a very, very fun team to play with. If they bring or even improve on their LA performance and add more auto options, they could find themselves at the top of the rankings come Alliance Selection. So folks, that was your forecast for the Orange County Regional. I'll be there once again as a game announcer, so stop by and say hi if you'd like, and I'll see you there, folks. Thanks, Stanford. Sticking with the U.S. West, we move on to the Monterey Bay Regional, where we have our correspondent, LJ, covering the event. LJ? Welcome to the Monterey Bay event. In its fourth year's regional, there are some very impressive robots coming to this event. As is one of the later events of the season, there are only five robots out of the 36 competing that we have not seen. So let's buckle up, because what we have seen is a great showing. Let's dive into our locks, contenders, and dark horse. Our first lock is 1323 Madtown Robotics. They have one of the most unique robot archetypes I have seen this season. They have one of the most unique robot archetypes I have seen this year, with the capability to score an amp, trap, speaker, and the ability to shuttle pieces quickly from the, the source all the way over to the wing line. Now last year they went almost entirely undefeated for their entire season, only losing one round at their first regional, and this year has almost been as equally impressive, having won their first event and looking to do the same again. Currently ranked 8th in the world in EPA, I don't expect their performance to change. Our second lock is Team 604 Quicksilver. Currently ranked 31st worldwide in EPA with a strong showing at their first regional as event finalist, their bot has a high ceiling which they have yet to reach. With a powerful shooter and the ability to score in both speaker and amp, I predict that they will be forced to reckon with at this upcoming event. Now let's look at our contenders. Our first contender is Team 971 Spartan Robotics. They're one of the last well-known competitive teams to run tank, and yet they always perform on par with some of the best. This year is no exception, with a one-of-a-kind turret shooter that does not use flywheels to launch notes, but instead uses a bar to shoot pieces. While it will likely not have the range for wingline or farther shots, they, have, they were ranked 7 at their last district event. I expect them to iterate on their design to keep up with competition, and I'm excited to see their bot perform. Our second contender is the team 100 Wild Hats. The oldest FRC team in the West Coast and 1995 World Champions, Team 100 has a long history of impressive performance, and this year is no exception. They were 5th Alliance captain at their first regional this year, and they have a high ceiling which we have yet to reach. They were 5th Alliance captain at their first regional event, and their bot has a very high ceiling that I expect them to get closer to at this event. Now let's look at our Dark Horse. Our Dark Horse of the event is 2135 Presentation Invasion. With a very quick robot and a very good driver, they will be a good pick even if they are not able to score speaker from very far away. They were a second pick of a line 7 at the Sacramento Regional, and are predicted to rank 13th at this event. I expect them to be a high pick if not Alliance captain. Good luck to all the teams competing here, I'll be watching eagerly to see the results. 
We hope you're enjoying this video here on fun. If so, do make sure you click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all fun YouTube videos and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. We'd like to thank this show's sponsor, Kettering University, for their support of fun. Those who are accepting the Kettering University are eligible to receive up to $5,000 a year in a robotic scholarship. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to get more information about Kettering University and the robotic scholarship. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics to so go attend somewhere that has so many other people like you at kettering.edu slash first. Moving out of the California region, we head over to Nevada, where we have our correspondent Andre covering the Las Vegas Regional. Andre? Down in Nevada, next weekend, at the Las Vegas Regional at the Thomas & Mack Center, features 45 teams, most of which um, find their home in the Silver State. The Las Vegas Regional is one of the older events, being first in 2005 for the first time. Let's look at the locks, contenders, and dark horse for this event. Starting off with our lock, 44-14, your reigning world champion, High Tide, from Ventura, California. Already this season, 44-14 has won their home event, the, Los the Ventura County Regional, with an astonishing 15-0 record for the event. But that was not enough for 44-14. Since that event, they built a complete other robot that they'll be taking to, the Las, Vegas to Las Vegas this weekend, as well as the world championship. I'm confident we'll be seeing 44-14 in the finals this weekend. Next up, our first contender, 74-26, Pair of Dice Robotics from here in Las Vegas. 74-26 has had stellar performance at their first event, the Utah Regional, ranking second and finishing as finalists. 74-26 is coming in at the second highest EPA for the event, second only to the previous champs. The short design is surely to land Pair of Dice as a contender in this event. Moving on to our next contender, 987, the High Rollers, from right here in Las Vegas. 987 is famously known for their entrance into the Hall of Fame in 2016, as well as the performance on the field that matches that. Week 1 at the Silicon Valley Regional, they finished um, rank 4th overall and 4th in EPA. 987 has had 4 weeks um, to, from now till then to perfect their machine, and I am confident it will shine this weekend. Lastly. For contenders, at least. 687, the Nerd Herd, from Carson, California, is coming up to the Las Vegas Regional on their third regional this year. 687 features a speedy handoff based on base design that will be sure to wow this um, this weekend. At the Las Vegas or Los Angeles Regional, they were ranked fifth and finalists, proving their spot as a contender. 687 comes out with competitive robots year after year, and this year will be no different. Now lastly, for our Dark Horse this weekend, 6403 Plasma Robotics from Mesa, Arizona. 6403 last competed at the Arizona Valley Regional where they were ranked 16th in the first pick of Line 6. But looking at their performance in this match, they glide across the field, efficiently scoring notes. 6403 has had the 8th highest EPA um, for this event so far, and I expect it to soar up after this weekend due to the speed of their intake and distance shooting. Overall, with incredibly quick cycles. There are many teams at the Las Vegas Regional deserving of this list. Matches are going to be competitive at um, this weekend at the Las, Valley, Las Vegas Regional. Good luck to all teams attending. Thanks, Andre. Moving on over to the U.S. South, we have Tosif, who will be covering the first in Texas Space City event. Tosif? We are in the final week of first in Texas before the district championship. So let's take a look at Space City at Friendswood District event hosting 33 teams at Clearbrook High School in Friendswood, Texas. And we got two teams on a revenge tour after losing it last year in finals match three by three points. It's going to be really excited to see what all these teams do to, to make their final way to district championship. And it's, it's going to be a fun one, so I'm really excited to walk you through with my one lock, three contenders, and my one dark horse for this event. Now, my first lock is got to be Team 118 Robonauts. They have attended four events so far this season. Week one, they went to the Katy District event. They were ranked fourth, and they won the event. It was an amazing run that they had. Next week, they went to Green Country. They ranked fifth, but they went one and two in playoffs. 
they had a bit of a struggle, but it's 118. They went to Tallahassee the following week and went ranked one and went uh, went undefeated in the playoffs. Always amazing to see their growth. And then in last week, they went to Houston, ranked one, and they went through playoffs. Only lost one match, but they were able to come back and win finals. Now they're heading to Space City with a total EPA of 39.4. They're, they're for sure the the main team to keep an eye out at Space City because they're 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 the robonauts. They're always a team to keep an eye out and they're always amazing to watch and I'm really excited to see them on their revenge tour to win Space City. Now for my first contender it is team 9128 8 can robotics. They went to Plano in week two and they ranked second for the event and it was picked by the number one seed of 148 and they went on to win the event they have a total epa of 26.9 and they've done a little bit of changes for their robot making it more clean more aesthetically pleasing but they have also done a lot of pro program and that program code path and just a lot more autonomous features so i'm really excited to see them play at space city it was amazing to see them play at Plano, so at knowing them and their work with their junior team at Can Robotics, there's a lot of work that they have done to make sure they're prepared for Space City. Now for my second contender is Team 231 High Voltage. They went to Week 1 KD District event with a total EPA of 23.7, and they were finalists. They played against 118 for the finals, and it was it was surprised. It was very one-sided, unfortunately, but you have five weeks in between those two events. They're going to come back with something for sure. They played really well overall in playoffs, but when you're up against 118 it's a tough battle but they will come back but with in five weeks they are for sure gonna show something that will prove for them to be a top contender my final contender is another team on the revenge tour team three two four chips 118 sister team they were together last year at space city and they're on their revenge tour. They attended San Antonio in week three, and they but they finished the event in fourth place overall, coming out with a total EP of 19.7. They're going to be a fun team to watch. They were finalists in their division at States uh, last year as well. So it's always nice to see Chips come out and show the capabilities that they have. And I'm really excited to see them play out at Space City. Finally, for my dark horse, I have 8177 Vector. Oh, yeah. They had a rough start in KD. They went uh, one and two in finals. But again, just similar to high voltage, they had five weeks to come back and prepare for Space City. So I'm really excited to see what they do. They're an open alliance team. So I'm excited to see what they do. Now, Good luck to all teams at Space City. It's the final week before DCMP. So good luck to everyone in first in Texas. And I'm excited to see what you guys do this week and at States. Thanks, Talsif. Let's head over to Ontario, where we have our correspondent, Jeff, covering the McMaster University event. Jeff? This FRC forecast takes us to McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, where 35 teams will try and guarantee their spot in the upcoming Ontario Provincial Championship in week six. Since this is the last week before Provincials and the vast majority of district teams play two events, we've seen the majority of these teams play already. That being said, there are still five teams broken down into one lock, three contenders, and one dark horse that I want to go over for this event. Starting with my lock for this event, it's none other than Team 2056 OP Robotics from Stony Creek, Ontario. Coming into this event as the number five team in the world by EPA, with the highest EPA, Auto EPA, Teleop EPA, and Melody RP EPA, but not in-game RP, which I'll touch on later. At this event, 2056 is definitely the favored team to take the number one seed and win this event. 
They went 17-0-0 at the New Market Complex event with an OPR of 61, with the second highest OPR of full 24 points lower at 37. 2056 with their robot low key are low key primed to take this event by storm and hang another winner's blue banner in their pit coming up to the provincial championship. Moving right along to my first contender, it's going to be team 1325 inverse paradox from Mississauga, Ontario. With the overall third highest EPA, second highest Melody RP EPA, and the second highest Teleop EPA, this team already has an event win that became a double gold clingling at the Centennial College event in week two as the first overall pick of the first alliance. With an over the bumper intake that doubles as their amp scoring mechanism and hands off to their consistent speaker shooter, this team has what it takes to stand out from the rest of this already stacked event and potentially take home the winning title. Next up on my list of contenders is Team 3161 Tronic Titans from Oakville, Ontario. With the second highest EPA overall and the second highest auto EPA, it's this team's ability to customize compatible autonomous modes with potential partners, as well as consistent climbing for those extra points at the end and ability to score in the speaker from anywhere within the wing that makes this team a valuable addition to any alliance. Coming off a of gold silver cling bling as the third alliance captain at the Humber College event, 3161 is itching to add to their blue banner count and will definitely be bringing their all at McMaster. My final contender for this event is none other than Team 1241 Theory 6 from Mississauga, Ontario. Another team that's coming off a double gold cling bling, this time after going 16-1-0 at the Durham event and winning as the first pick of the First Alliance. With the fourth highest EPA overall and the ability to grab notes from the center line during auto to potentially score them or just prevent opponents from grabbing them, my only concern with this team is their lack of a climber, leaving them with one of the lowest in-game EPA values coming into this event. However, this team's consistent, fast scoring more than makes up for a lack of climb, and there's always a possibility that they add one before the event. Regardless, 1241 is another team to watch out for going into this event. And lastly, I want to discuss a potential dark horse at this event. My dark horse pick is 5409 at Chargers from Oakville, Ontario. While this team is 8th in EPA overall coming into this event, they get overshadowed a bit by the similarly numbered 5406 Celtex. We saw 5409 just last weekend at the North Bay event where they were able to take the third seed uh, and captain the second alliance, but unfortunately met a bit of an early exit, taking fourth place overall. However, this team does have the number one in-game EPA overall at a full 8.2, and they're tied for the number one overall Harmony RP EPA with 2056. This might sound weird. An individual robot can only get up to four in-game points on their own with a spotlit climb, right? Well, remember, in-game EPA takes into account the number of in-game points, not just climbing points. And guess what counts for in-game points that this team is capable of doing? That's right, scoring in the trap. Effectively, this team is good for an additional 8 points in the final seconds of the match, creating potential upset material should other teams at the event realize this. Overall, the McMaster University event is shaping up to be an exciting one to wrap up the district events of Ontario before the provincial championship next week. Let me know which teams you're watching for in the comments below. Thanks, Jeff. Let's move over to the 1st of Michigan District, where we have our correspondent, Carter, covering the Macomb District event. Carter? This forecast is coming out of the 1st and Michigan District, where we will be checking out the Macomb District event. 40 teams are competing here, and there are three names that stand out above the rest. That is 5460 Strike Zone, 9312 Nerd Spark, and 3175 Night Vision. Some other teams that I'm looking out for are Team 818, 7197, 6120, 1189, and 1023. Let's get into my five teams that will be my locks, contenders, and my dark horse for this event. My number one lock for this event is definitely going to have to be Team 5460 Strike Zone out of Lapeer, Michigan, last year's world finalists. With their phenomenal performance at the Week 3 Ontario District Durham College event and their good showing at the FIM District Kettering University Number 1 event, they have a lot of experience going into their second FIM District event. At their most recent competition, they were selected to be on the first alliance after ranking third in qualifications. They brought it to the finals where they would take home the silver, giving them all the more motivation to take home the gold at this Macomb event. Currently ranked second by EPA, they have been fantastic at passing notes down the field to take advantage of the amplified period when the time comes. With their incredibly consistent shooter and upgraded trap mechanism, I expect 5460 to take home this event. My number two lock for this event is going to be 9312 Nerd Spark from Albion, Michigan. This team made it all the way to Einstein their rookie year in 2023. Although they are ranked fourth by EPA, I expect them to be a lock at this event with their new and improved AMP mechanism, which doubles as a completely new trap mechanism, as posted on Instagram. 
At the Fem District Jackson event, 93-12 captained the number four alliance and led them to match 12, where unfortunately they got knocked out of the elimination bracket. I expect 93-12 to captain the number one alliance or be the first pick on the field. My contender for this event uh, is going to be Team 3175 Night Vision from Gross Point Woods, Michigan. Night Vision ranked first at the Fem District Milford event and took home silver. Their impressive five-game piece auto and incredible shooting has set them currently at the number one EPA at this event. I expect a great performance out of 3175 this weekend. My second contender for this event is going to be 3539, the Biting Bulldog from Romeo, Michigan. Having been the third Alliance first pick at the Fem District Wayne State event, this team made it all the way to the finals. Their large range of autos paired with their impressive amp and speaker action from this team leads me to believe that we will see some great things out of this machine this weekend. And for my dark horse, I have Team 1023 Bedford Express from Temperance, Michigan. At the Fem District Jackson event, uh, 1023 was the first pick of the third alliance and took home silver. I believe if 1023 has been doing work on autos and getting some more drive practice in, they will be a force to reckon with at the upcoming Macomb competition. Good luck to all the teams competing at this event, and I look forward to seeing how Macomb turns out. Thanks, Carter. Well, that concludes this episode of FRC Forecast. I hope you enjoyed our locks, contenders, and dark horses for the events we covered. Be sure to let us know down below who you think the locks, contenders, and dark horses are for your events. And be sure to join us next week as we'll be covering all of the district championships. For now, I'm Angel Miranda. You're watching Forecast. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.